Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook. Download the app and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. It'll be fun. You can wager on sports and everyone likes doing that. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. We've got a lot of fun stuff to get to today. Before we do, make sure you smash that like button for us on YouTube. Make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube page. Make sure if you're a podcast listener, you subscribe and follow there as well. And we would really love it if you could take 15 seconds and leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. That would be lovely. We would love you for that. Uh, last night, Mario and I got to go to Rockford to watch the Ice Hogs and the Iowa Wild play. We're going to talk about that. We've got some uh, Blackhawks prospects, especially my boy. Having some great success around the world of my hockey. Boy. My boy. <laughs> You're my boy. Savoy. <laughs> yeah. Last night was fun, man. Yeah, it was. I kind of yeah. felt like you were hosting me because you've been there so many times <laughs> and I had never been. And, you know, it was cool. I, I, yeah. I enjoyed the BMO. I've only, the only AHL game I've ever been to is uh, the Wolves, which to me always feels like, well, first of all, the building's too big. So there's nothing the Wolves can do about it. It's, they play in too big of an arena to have great energy. Um, but boy, the BMO was intense and it wasn't even full. Yeah. Maybe what? Two, two thirds full. Maybe the or so? lower bowl was pretty much full. And yeah. There, there were some scattered, uh, fans in the upper bowl, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a good atmosphere. I mean, for, a, for a Wednesday night game, yeah. uh, on kind of on short notice to sell tickets. Um, there's only so much you can do, but yeah, I think the, the ice hogs t- crowd was great. Uh, they were treated to some free hockey and, and they all went home happy. I, I'm sure. So yeah, it was it was it was a good night. Like I said uh, before the end of yesterday's show, it was my first time being there in over three years, and a couple things were different. Uh, press box is different, but it's uh, no longer a press box. It's a it's a press row. They have a table there oh, now. Well, that, a ta- they didn't have there, that last there's year. There's a table there now, so that's good. All right. Uh, so it's more of a press row now, but um, that the, uh, the the scoreboard and the video bo- video board was all that, new. They changed that last season. Uh, so that looked good. Uh, the it's concourse. Actually, it's actually it's. Still not at center ice though. But you couldn't that's you couldn't tell from where we were sitting, yeah. but but yeah, I mean it was uh, it, it looked great. Um, concourse had some upgrades. Yeah, I mean it's you know the Blackhawks obviously uh, put in an, an investment in in the Ice Hogs, uh, put in an investment in the arena, and it's it's paying off. We talked with uh, Mike Folta of uh, the of the Ice Hogs. We talked with uh, Mike Peck of the Ice Hogs as well. We got all the all the oh, mics nice. uh, checked off. And uh, yeah, they're you know they're they're happy and, and excited with what's going on now, and and looking forward to what's coming next season. There's still some uh, upgrades and renovations to be done. So yeah, good things uh, for the Ice Hogs. And hey, you're never gonna you're never gonna not say uh, yes to an overtime win. So that made the sure. uh, made the drive out there well worth it. Well, it's an exciting time to be an Ice Hogs fan because as we kind of look ahead to the excitement for the Hawks in three or four years. For Rockford, it's going to be two or three years. It'll be next year. Be, yeah, it could next be next year. year There's yeah. going to be a lot of, you know, Allen and Del, Del Mastro. There's going to be a bunch of new faces there. Yep. Depending on who they draft, they could be there too. Um, and, and we asked that to Andre Sorensen the other day. Like, mm-hmm. is it kind of exciting to know that you guys are going to be really damn good? They're already a pretty good team. Mm-hmm. We were talking last night. When they're fully assembled and they don't have their all their call-ups in Chicago, um, that's one of the better rosters in the AHL. And, yeah, they're going to lose Lucas Reichel. They'll probably lose, I don't know, it feels like Isaac Phillips and, and Alex Vlasic are yeah. in the plans. Those are going to be the first two guys yeah. to get that shot to stay in Chicago, I believe. Yeah, and, and uh, Soderblom as well is going to be right. uh, the 1A, 1B with Mrazek next season. I think that's pretty much penciled. But yeah. you slide in Drew Camezzo. Drew Camezzo and, and Jackson, slide in, Jackson Stauber is going to be good. Just Phillips and Vlasic are gone. They're replaced by Nolan Allen and Ethan DeMastro. Mm-hmm. Not too shabby right there. No. You bring back some veterans. Uh, you're going to need some scoring up front, but you got Cini coming back next year. Phillips coming back next year. Those are two of your top scorers. Gust as well, if Gust, I'm not yes, mistaken. because when yeah. he signed that deal so he could play in the, uh, in the NHL, it was for next mm-hmm. year. So those are three of your top veteran point getters and and Cini and gust were all over the uh, the ice last night a big reason why the ice hogs won that's so. exactly why they were brought in mm-hmm. because that's what they took a page out of the chicago wolves book and let's just get ahl veterans that know how to win ahl play david gust was called part of the Carter calder cup run for the wolves last year mm-hmm. 
That's why I think they have the advantage over Iowa. And no surprise, it went to overtime. Yeah. Eighth out of 13, yeah. right? Eighth, yeah. eighth, 13th game eighth time out of 13. Time had to go, and I bet you, it's not on DraftKings. If it was, I would bet it. <laughs> Probably not the last <laughs> so overtime t- game they're going to play Tomorrow either. night in Iowa. Uh, yeah, Just it's going to be a good one. Huge win for the Ice Hogs, knowing that you don't have to win both games on the road now to keep your season alive. You mm-hmm. needed to win that game. And yeah. Best two out of three, which is insane, and you only have one game at home, you better win that one I, game at home. I think I asked all three people we talked to last night, uh, Sorensen, Grimaldi, and mm-hmm. Vlasic, if yeah. it was a must win, and they all said yes. Yeah. They all had the feeling that, that taking game one was essential. Yeah. And we had a nice long conversation with Mark Bernard. Uh, mm-hmm. After the game, kind of waiting for the post game stuff to happen. He's the our Ice Hogs GM, if you don't know, and he was just raving about, you know, like you said, Kyle Davidson allowing him to bring in some guys to make Rockford more competitive and not just filling the team with yeah. prospects that are here and prospects that are never going to sniff the right. NFL NHL. Mm-hmm. You bring in guys like like you mentioned, and they're competitive. And and that and and what Bernard said was. By being a more competitive team, you're putting your prospects in more competitive situations, more intense situations, and are developing faster and better. It's all mm-hmm. about the culture. Yes. You start winning at the AHL level, you bring that mentality and that work ethic to the NHL level, mm-hmm. and you, it tra- it, you, the transformation is much easier, the adjustment. It's all about the culture that Kyle Davidson and Luke Richardson is, is bringing in, and we're seeing it in year one in Rockford, and that's awesome. Um, you know, for the first time since the Ice Hogs became the Chicago Blackhawks affiliate, they're actually important. Yeah. Very important. Yep. They're not just a place they're where you not, sto- yeah. story your it's young players. You, for for a long time, they were just like when you used to be able to bury contracts in the AHL. It's like, all right, how do we? It was a way for salary cap circumvention. Like, hey, let's send this guy down there for a few games. Right. They never had the prospects that they're going to get down there. You know, yeah, they produced some players that were part of the championship runs. You know, Brian Bickle played down there. Corey uh, Corey Crawford. Corey Crawford was there for forever. Jarmerson was there. Jarmerson played down there. You know, uh, Christopher Stieg played down there for a little bit. So they, they, they have produced guys, but now they're so vital to the organization's future. And that's awesome for them because... As you were saying, Jay, being your first time there, it is a die-hard fan base in Rockford because it's Rockford. They're, it's their hometown That's team. The they, they, pride they, they live and die about uh, with that team. Mm-hmm. And you talk about the Wolves, and the difference is there. First of all, thirty-five hundred people in the BMO Center feels really good. Feels like good. everybody, it's a, still a big crowd. Yeah, thirty-five hundred at the Allstate Arena, and you feel like there's nine people there because it's just such a big arena. That's not the Wolves' fault. You know, that's where they play. They can't fill that building anymore. Back in the day, they were able to, you know, on weekends or playoff games. They're just not possible because you're essentially Chicago. Chicago's not going to get behind a minor league team. Rockford is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All season long. You it's know? Right, you know, it's right in their backyard. Yeah, it's right in the middle of, <laughs> of, of the town. The arena is centrally located. Lots, And what I love is... From where I, when I started covering Rice Sox games to now, and it's probably even more. I haven't been there in a year. I'm hopefully they win in Iowa this weekend, and I'll definitely get out there for a second round game against Texas. They have built up that area right around the arena so much. Yeah. There's so much to do. Before, as, as as early as like four years ago, there really wasn't anything there. There are a couple of restaurants right around, around the there. arena. Yeah, but they put that that big Embassy Suites hotel right down mm-hmm. the street. Uh, there's there's like a little more like an entertainment district being built up. It's it's awesome. Yeah, it was I, it was I, it was cool seeing the the development because um, again I hadn't been there in three in three years. So seeing it like a lot of things finished that the last time I was there was like just getting started. That was, was pretty an cool. Area of Rockford, you didn't want to be walking alone after dark. Yeah, as early I mean, as, as soon as three four years ago, and yeah. now you're seeing it get revitalized and some investment investment getting made in that area, and that's that that that's only going to help the ice hogs mm-hmm. yeah i wasn't sure what to expect from the area like i'd never like i said never been there before and there were parts i was driving through like beautiful mansions <laughs> that i drove by mm-hmm. like it reminded me a lot that of Joliet's house oh really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it just reminded me a lot of joliet like where there's beautiful old historic homes and there's parts that are like, it's okay, like a like, park a little run down. yeah a little bit but then around the arena if you ever been to the rialto in joliet very similar 
where a couple of years ago it was kind of like, yeah, but they've built up around yeah. it. They've kept that historic building going and it's kind of revitalized that little like footprint of the neighborhood. And you could tell things around the BMO are, are growing and changing and, mm-hmm. and improving. So that's, I mean, look, when a, when a team like the Hawks comes in and invests in a community, that's good for everybody there. It creates jobs. It creates something to do. It's, and it's, you know, it's great that it's coinciding with the ice hogs being so relevant. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Like, and there's a reason to be excited about the ice hogs. Cause for so many years it was, Oh yeah. The locals will get excited about the ice hogs, but black Hawk fans had no reason to pay attention. But now you're giving reasons for people to make the trip from yeah. Chicago to go see a game on a Saturday. And now, Hey, we can make a whole day out of it. We can go yeah. and, and we can have lunch here and, Go do this and this, and then go to the game to cap yeah. off our night. You That's know? like in twenty what twenty fourteen, Cubs fans like me were going out to Iowa to see Bryant and yeah. <laughs> and Baez and Contreras play because yeah. the the team on the ice uh, on the field sucked then. So you went to see what was coming next. Yeah. It was exciting. Those games were packed. Yeah, and you get access to those guys that you're not going to be able to get anywhere else. Right. Yeah. As as as, as fans and uh, as as media, it's it's interesting to you know be uh, be in that environment and. Yeah, I mean it's it's a lot of a lot of guys that have that have come through that have become you know big time uh, names for the Blackhawks, Stanley Cup champions, big time names you know around the league have gone through uh, have gone through Rockford and and are going to continue to do that as as seems to be the uh, pretty clear development plan for the for for, for Kyle Davidson and, and moving forward. So yeah, I mean it's a it's it's a it's a great um, great setup. It's great that the Blackhawks are are treating the ice hogs as their development team now and not just they're like oh they're just the miners like no it's like it's development like that's that's their focus and um you know as as we were talking with with mark bernard last night a uh, couple of the prospects that they have uh right now that are you know uh like like a writer ralston paul ludwinski those guys they were walking through and he was just like he just kind of made a point like hey yeah like these guys are here too and this is important because they're going to come up in the next year or two and they're getting the experience of being around here, seeing, you know, seeing how we're operate, being around this 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 environment now in the playoffs, and how important that is. So it's a it's a it's a lot of attention and foresight to the future, which is really important because there's going to be those guys that I just named, uh, guys that we've already named like Del Mastro, Nolan Allen, like uh, Colton Doc, like these guys that are going to be coming through in the next year or two that are going to be really important. They're going to come through Rockford. They're going to have to develop. They're going to have to, you know, kind of grow up before becoming, you know, NHL players, and that's where it's all going to happen. So it's uh, it's going to be really exciting to see that. Speaking that team. of that, good time to remind people before we take our first break of the show that tomorrow at 2 p.m. we will be joined by Mackenzie Entwistle. Another former Rockford. That's player. right. Yes. He's going to join us on the show. Looking forward to that conversation with him. We're going to remind you, if you missed yesterday's show, to not make the orphan jokes in the chat until we explain yes. the orphan bit to him. We are going to let him in. We're going to we're going to include him on the bit. So don't ask him like, you know, do you miss your mom before yeah, he's aware? Cause sorry he's to hear be... about your family. We don't want to send him into a yeah. panic on uh, as the show's on. That's do you know happened. the words the hard knock life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're going to let him in on the joke, but uh, we're going to interview him first and then let him know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, easy in the chat there. Everybody, be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Yeah, I don't have a family. <laughs> i'm excited for that that's gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun first uh active player that we'll uh that we'll have on yeah, the show so that's yeah, gonna yeah. be uh that's gonna be pretty cool, that yep. be cool. and mckenzie's a good dude we're gonna get a good conversation going with him yeah absolutely and uh so yeah to put a bow on the ice hogs conversation three two win in overtime uh lucas reichel looked great he it's a, he's a different guy. Yeah, like he, he's he, he might as well be wearing a neon green jersey when he's on the ice because he <laughs> just stands out so much among all those other guys. Yep, yep. And and even though he didn't didn't show up on the score sheet, he was, uh, like you said, like he was taking control of the game. Um, it just you just saw it every time the the puck was on his stick. He had the mentality of like I can create something, like I can make something happen, and that's that's what that what we've been talking about ever since he got to North America has been, let's see him build that confidence and get to that point. He's at that point, And I'm, I'm very excited to see what he does in the, in these postseason in this postseason. Hopefully it's a long one. And then what he does next year as a full-time NHL. Player. The other thing too, and if you want to see some of our post game interviews, you can go to our Twitter account at CHGO underscore Blackhawks. 
Alex Vlasic was in the third period, like really taking control offensively, mm-hmm. kind of fending off uh, defenders with spin moves and spinoramas, and like, <laughs> damn, like haven't seen this part of Alex Vlasic's game. And he said, "Gazelle out there, I'm too young to bring it to the NHL, yeah. you know." But I, I, I want to do it soon. Um, yeah, you're seeing these guys that had their chance in the NHL really showing the confidence and really showing, you know. And it's funny because I think people assume like, well, now they're going to go down and dominate. The game itself is a lot sloppier. Mm-hmm. So an NHL game flows a little more smoothly than your average AHL game because everybody can make a pinpoint pass tape to tape for the most part. Whereas in, in the AHL, eh, you've got a lot of guys who are never going to play in the NHL. So it, the game can get a little more gummed up here and there. So if you see Lucas Reich will go a couple games without a point, it's nothing to panic about. Watching the games really it, it illustrates he is just a different level. Like if you, again, you brought someone who's never seen – hockey game before and said which of these guys is the best they would all isolate on Reichel he's just he was outstanding yeah he was great so yeah big game tomorrow night uh should be fun seven o'clock start I believe uh for the Ice Hogs and Wild uh game two a potentially clinching game two for the Ice Hogs uh so yeah be sure to check that out hey if you want to check out the best uh in Blackhawks merchandise and memorabilia uh, check out our friends at FOCO. Uh, get outfitted in the best sports gear around. They have amazing hoodies, shoes, signs, bobbleheads, everything in between that can help you look your best as a fan. Uh, it's spring, apparently, and baseball season is already underway. Uh, they have Aloha shirts, straw hats, polos, uh, bags, everything that you need for the game uh, to look great, check out FOCO. Uh, they also have, uh, you know, you can check out our line of decorations behind us. Uh, yes. Some of the great-looking uh, bobbleheads and other figurines that FOCO has uh, to make sure that all your Chotskis are, are knocked, uh, checked off your list for your home or your office or your uh, podcasting set. FOCO has donated uh, a few of awesome pieces to our set, so you can... Uh, definitely check those out. And you can see uh, what's behind us is also on their website. Uh, check out foco.com. Click the link in the th- description below. And for all non pre sale items, you can use the promo code CHGO and you're going to get 10% off. Again, that's foco.com, F O C O.com. And it's NBA playoffs time. That means big hoops action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Get in on the excitement of every game with the touch of a button. New customers can make a $5 pregame money line bet and score $150 in bonus bets if their team wins. Plus, everyone can score a no-sweat same-game parlay every day during the NBA playoffs. Open the DraftKings Sportsbook app, opt in, and place a same-game parlay on any NBA game. If it doesn't hit, you'll get a bonus bet back up to $10. Now, I got to give you a quick same game parlay here. So I'm going to go on the app and tell you names that I recognize. Here we go. (laughs) Sean Anderson's here. I'll get a thumbs up on this one. Here we go. This is a same game parlay. Steph Curry, 30 plus points. Clay Thompson, 20 plus points. That's a parlay plus 225. You like that? He says no. He's okay, giving that means, you the thumbs up, but also shaking his head no. All right, but that means fade <laughs> Sean Anderson. Is that term right? Bet against you? Yes. All right, do that. Fade him. Fade him. It is plus 225, 30 plus points for Steph Curry, 20 plus points for Clay Thompson in the Sacramento Kings, Golden State Warriors basketball matchup. Download the app now and sign up with the code CHGO. New customers, again, can make a $5 pregame money line bet and score $150. Dollars in bonus bets if their team wins only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the code CHGO. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Massachusetts, call 800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelplinema.org. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Kansas, call 800-522-4700 on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas. 21 plus, 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Whew. Or just Google it. Way to go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
<laughs> Only nine mistakes in a disclaimer. Nah, we're fine. Well, you know what I hope isn't a mistake is, yeah. our, is our DraftKings pick of the week. Do it. It should be a good uh, one. And I'm going with tonight's hockey uh, that we'll be talking about here shortly. This was a uh, pre already pre-made easy parlay that they came up with. I believe it was called the Puff Puff Pass mm-hmm. parlay. <laughs> Aptly named. Uh, yes. So it's all about dudes who like to set up other dudes to score goals. Oh, I thought it was something else. No. Uh, well, no. Wrong league. Um, <laughs> so they, they had a... Uh, over, so we basically need Mitch Marner, Artemi Panarin, and Nathan McKinnon all to get assists tonight. Uh, at least one assist. Like they all ones. had assists in game one of their series. I think Colorado's offense is going to explode tonight. Artemi Panarin, you know, he's almost guaranteed to get an assist at some point. And the, and the, the Maple Leafs, they really need a big offensive night tonight. So if all three of those guys get an assist, it's plus 363 are the odds Damn. of that. That's pretty good value. That's and a nice bet. So you, like bet, you bet, bet 10 bucks on that, you're going to get over 46 bucks back. So uh, including your not, 10, you bet. But yeah, um, that's a pretty good. I think that's a pretty good one. That's how most of my hockey bets that I've won this season have been. It's just bet on guys that usually get a point to get a point. Yeah. You don't have to get <laughs> fancy. You don't have to win $3,000 a, a bet. If you win double your money every time, you're going to be all right. Death by a thousand cuts. That's how you do it. That's the fun way. And that's those same game parlays on DraftKings Sportsbook. Um, all right, should we talk about the uh, – you want to do the prospects in the playoffs or you want to do some NHL playoffs first? Let's run through the prospects in the playoffs because it's just a few of them. So you know where we're starting. We are starting in uh, Quebec with the uh, Olympiques de Gatineau uh, with Samuel Savoie. That's my, that's my French-Canadian accent, so yell at me if it's bad. Um, Samuel Savoie and Gatineau, uh, they swept – the uh, Ruan Noranda Huskies uh, four game sweep in the second round of the uh, Quebec Major Junior Hockey League uh, playoffs. Uh, he hasn't been a guy driving the offense oh, all that you. much, but he has uh, a couple of assists, I think one or two goals in the postseason. Um, they have, that is a loaded team, uh, and I would not be surprised if they uh, if they get to the Quebec Finals. Um, I believe they're going to face Sherbrooke in the conference finals, but that's not confirmed the yet. French-sounding team in the Quebec League. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Brent Sherbrooke. Yes. Yes. Also, yeah, Brent Seabrook, his birthday today. Why am I keep playing with the mic? Um, so, yeah, Savoie, he's, uh, he's into the conference finals of the, of the Q, so that's really good. Uh, in the OHL tonight, the Sarnia Sting have a chance to sweep the Saginaw Spirit uh, in the second round of the OHL playoffs, that's Ethan Del Mastro. Um, he's been having a really good, a really good postseason run. A couple of assists uh, to his to his name. Uh, had a big fight in the opening round. Uh, that was uh, that was fun to see. He got the uh, the Sarnia crowd uh, charged up there. So they're up 3-0. They have a chance to sweep tonight uh, to reach the OHL conference finals. And last night, in convincing fashion, the wagon that is the Seattle Thunderbirds. Uh, got rid of the Prince George Cougars with an 8-2 to two win Oof. in Game 4. They also sweep their way to the WHL Conference Finals. Uh, Nolan Allen last night, uh, I believe a pair of assists. Colton Dock had a goal and two assists. Uh, Kevin Korczynski not on the score sheet last night, but he has been producing a lot of points uh, throughout the postseason. So those guys are taking care of business. Um, see, I mean, good luck to whoever's facing Seattle in the next round. Their matchup's not uh, uh, not quite set yet, but, um, man, I'd, I'd be shocked if the, if, if those three teams uh, with, with Savoie, Del Mastro, and the, and the trio in Seattle, I'd be shocked if they all weren't playing in their, in their uh, uh, league finals. Let's get them all the Memorial Cup. That'd Let's be get them all the yeah, Memorial really Cup. Yeah. That'd be wonderful. The Cup. And it's in Kamloops? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Cam let's Loops, let's get a Cam Loops my, my Seattle favorite Aldi brand of breakfast cereal. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, uh, a Cam Loops Seattle Gatineau and uh, Sarnia Memorial Cup. That would be wonderful. All right, before we get into Stanley Cup playoffs, you mentioned pronouncing of uh, French Canadian names. I have to apologize for uh, pronunciation yesterday. Uh, we we uh, I. And then that led to you doing it as well because you listened to me. First mistake. Uh, we mispronounced New York Rangers legend 
Rod Gilbert. Gilbert. See, Gilbert. I, I mean, listen, mm. I, I should know that. That's on me. Being the history guy, I was pr- saying Rod Gilbert. Uh, not that I care if I offend New York Rangers fans, but uh, I, I need to be accurate. It's Gilbert, <laughs> but when you put Rod Gilbert on a piece of paper in Chicago, it's going to get pronounced Rod Gilbert, not Rod Gilbert. But, was uh, it, I was, uh, were we not mispronouncing one old Dennis retired, Gilbert all this so. time? Yeah, Denis Gilbert. Denis Gilbert? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I was I was one year old when he retired. And so. Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. in peace. Yes. Mm-hmm. All you right. Did. So there. I just wanted to uh, there to, to own it. Some housekeeping. Own it. it. I, I mispronounced Rod Gilbert, and I apologize. You pwned it for doing that. I'm taking away your blue check mark. Ah. No, never had one. There you go. Oh, Good nice. For you. Good for you. Well, he was already in the club. We joined the club today. Yeah. yeah. You guys are down Under to my level club. now, suckers. Feels right. good. <laughs> feels good to be unchecked. People will leave me alone. Now we know what it feels like to be Patrick Kane, unchecked, right through the ice. You know, I talked about uh, <laughs> oversharing, as I always do. I talked about the accident I saw the other day at the Rockford game, sitting there, and I'm, I, my Facebook is open. And I get a direct message from a woman who I've never met or spoken to before telling me this long story of how she once witnessed a fatal accident. I'm like, thank oh, you. Interesting. Thank you, stranger, for entering my life without asking. Can we also talk about the weird thing that happened on the way to the locker room last night with us? Yes. Did you, so did you, was that, does it involve the new slim buff Hamilton? No, uh, no. It's but I, 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 I will say lean hammy is a little awkward. It's off-putting. He's, he's, I want he's, fat hammy yeah, back. I want my he's ham fatty. Little, he's a little, nobody wants in shape hammy. We want jolly is, lovable hammy. I don't know what happened in the off season with Hammy. I think he was doing the the Chris Chelios bring the bike in the sauna sauna <laughs> thing, and he he slimmed all that, down all real that fast. AG one, yes, absolutely. RIP AG one. Um, I stand corrected. Thank, thank you, AG one. They just don't. They just look at the look at look at us and like, oh well, that's not gonna work. Okay, <laughs> no one's oh. gonna believe them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, ah, yes, Sorry, there's Mario. a graphic in hey, everything. Hey, my wife, my wife still uses AG one every day. There's so. a graphic in everything. Oh, they haven't been on our reads for Free a while. So <laughs> send us some more samples. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, 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 you see what it did for Hammy. Anyway, um, the awkwardness. Anyway, the yes. So okay, so we are making our way uh, down, <laughs> making our way downtown, walking fast, faces pass, and we're homebound. Uh, to the locker room, and we're going through the crowd, and obviously we're we're, you know, we're going the opposite direction. We're going upstream. Right, everyone's traffic, yeah. everyone's leaving. We're heading down to the locker room, and uh, this this woman taps me on the shoulder and says, "Excuse me, can I get a picture of you?" And I'm like, I thought she was talking about you, because who am I? I don't. I'm You're nobody. Her daughter's a big fan. Yeah. So she goes, can I get a picture of you? My daughter's a big fan and sorry, I have to be a mom, but she'd be so excited. And I'm like, sure. And I looked at you and I was like, are you getting in on this? Cause I she had, talking to me. I was like, why <laughs> are you just talking to me and want a picture of me? I, I don't know who this woman is. I don't know who her daughter is. I don't know why she needed a picture of me. I did not get her name. Yeah. I don't know if she confused me for anybody. She she wasn't like, are you? She, yeah, she never said your name. No, she's like, can I just get a picture of you? And I'm like, all right. And we're trying to get to the locker room. So I'm like, can, like he, what he is has, happening? Can we get out of here? He like, pose like. I just was, was like, hey, smile. And like, we move on to the locker room. And I say to Jay, I was like, that was the weirdest thing that's ever happened. That's pretty <laughs> weird. Did she say, hey, Mario? No. no. She's, so, she so, had so there's a chance over. she thought you were somebody else. Right. She did not say, are you so and are you Mario? She thought you were like injured ice hog forward Garrett Mitchell. Maybe. I have no, <laughs> I have no idea. And like, I wasn't dressed like a player. Like, I didn't have a, a sport coat and a beanie on. Like, I had my bag and my, my pass. And it was the weirdest thing. So, Whoever you are, um, please reach out to the show or myself and like introduce yourself properly. That would be nice. Um, otherwise, there's just a random photo of me at the Ice Hogs game from last night floating around the internet yeah, somewhere. Was, I'm sure it's it's it was if, so weird. It'd be so funny weird. If, if she took it home and showed the picture of her daughter and your daughter's like, who the that's hell not the right that? person. <laughs> <laughs> who, the, who the f is that? Well, I mean, uh, it, it, I, I kind of hope that that was the case. No, it was it was you. I mean, like she definitely like spotted you and was like, "Oh my god, I gotta get a picture of you." And then, I, yeah. Uh, but like, it'd be one thing if it was like, "I want to take a picture with you." 
It was Did, I want to take a picture. Yeah, that that's of the other you. thing. It wasn't like someone yeah. who was like a CHGO fan or something was like, "Oh, can I get a picture with you guys?" Yeah, it was course. like, "I want a picture of you." Can you just stand there while and I, I was take like, a picture of you? Okay. <laughs> She's got like a shrine or something. Of, I don't know. Of you. I don't She's know. She's gonna find all your food scraps from the uh, if we go if garbage can. If we head back to another game in Rockford this postseason, um, one, I will keep my head on a swivel. But two, if you're at this at the game, uh, mother of daughter that took this picture, um, please introduce yourself properly. I would I would love to at least know what that was about. Yeah. So just in general, <laughs> when introducing yourself to anyone that you find famous on whatever level. If you feel like you're weird by introducing yourself, you're weirder by not. Mm -hmm. Just say, hello, I am so-and-so. I appreciate your music right, or your podcast right. or your blog or your TV show or whatever. Mm -hmm. And can I get a picture? Yeah, I, I, that, and it was, there was none of that. It was just like, hey, can I get a picture of you? My daughter's a big fan. And I'm like, of what? Yeah. <laughs> like, How old was the lady? Like ball I don't know. Um, I hate guessing Middle people's aged. ages. She was old enough to be uh, our our mom. I okay, the reason I was asking is so I was kind of wondering how old her daughter would be then to be watching the show. I would guess she's got know. like a late teenage daughter. Okay. Right? Not dead. That's, I mean like I mean, late teens. That's weird now. That's, this is getting weirder. Anyways. I mean, based on her, she probably looked like she was mid-50s maybe. Maybe a little older sure. than that. Sure. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. You got something just queued up. I'm waiting for it. I know. I don't know if I should say it, though. <laughs> say it. She doesn't know who we are. Well, if she's mid-50s in Rockford, her daughter could be 35. <laughs> <laughs> I can just, just see that right on the side. Just the wheels turning. <laughs> like, oh. I told you. I didn't know if I should say that or not. <laughs> always yes. The answer is always oh, yes. Man. Yes, yes, yes. Always, always, always. So, yeah, that... I that look forward to having my tires slashed <laughs> next time I'm in yeah. Rockford. But I don't think I'm wrong. That happened, uh, that happened at the game last Yeah, night. that was a little awkward. It was. And I didn't have time to process it because we were, like, rushing to the locker well, room. Well, yeah, and I, you and I are similar. and We're, like, just don't... You know, we're awkward in general, and I, I was so feeling your pain in that moment. I'm like slowly backing away, like Homer in the bush. Yeah, like, uh, you definitely just, just was just like, me. "This is your thing. <laughs> See you this later. is for you to handle." Yeah, yeah it was, it was uh, fading away. It was it was quite like interesting. Homer, that Homer in the bushes meme. Yeah, exactly. That's, uh, literally, what I was doing, I was yeah. I was trying to like see like <laughs> I wish she I could have done the same thing because if she had talked to both of us, it would have made more sense that she's right, a fan of been the like, show or oh, whatever. Fan of CHGO, senior senior on YouTube or whatever. She knew who you. My, my daughter thinks you're great. Those other two guys suck. But, but she you've you're been great. you have been writing about the Ice Hogs for a long time. That is that's my so that's my thought. Ice Hogs fans know who you are. And, I mean, Hawks fans do too. But like, I think you have that special connection with them, where that's you wrote about thought, them exclusively yeah. for a while. And people that are diehard fans or are looking for it, they certainly know who you were. Yeah. So I think that's what it was. And the, I, I probably the the mom probably couldn't get the name. Maybe you I don't know? I don't, like, I don't oh, know. But from her daughter's like she's got like. Bieber. But yeah, does does my does her daughter have like <laughs> my Twitter picture up on? Yeah, she's got Justin Bieber, like, Timothy Chalamet, and Mario. And Sharon and Mario. Oh, yeah, man. that's quite the drop off. It's like a, but it's a collage, like cut out of newspapers and stuff. Of course, yeah. And she has your hair and toenail clippings. That's well. <laughs> you're going to that length, uh, by all means. It's like, a big fan. Yeah, I guess. You know? I mean, she might murder you someday, but she's a big fan. Like I hey, said, well, head, on, head yeah, on as a long swivel as, you read, as, long as, you, as long as you click that like button, feel free. <laughs> sure. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Bill said that I take the beef sleeve to the game last night. No, I did not. So here's the thing. I, I uh, asked my buddy Joe Dredge, uh, formerly of the score. He now works at the, I think it's like the rock station in uh, Rockford. Um, like, where, where am I going? He's like, don't go to beef Roo. It's for locals only. And the quality has gone downhill. I'm like, all right, well, if you say it. I'm not going to go. So he told me to go to this place called Uncle Nick's. And he's like, you're going to love it. It's fat guy food totally. So I pull up to this place, Uncle Nick's, and it's got a sign on the door. It's giant letters. One person only. And it wasn't like for health reasons or COVID or anything. It was because it could only fit, it one, could fit person. one person. It was tiny. <laughs> Some dude in his kitchen making you a sandwich. Well, it was. I mean, that's what it was. I think this place used to be a gas station. From what I can tell. So this would be like the window where you go in and buy cigarettes or whatever. And then the kitchen was behind the door, which is always a good sign. Um, <laughs> and I ordered, I, I, I got some corn dogs because I saw them on the menu. I'm like, that sounds like it's going to hit the spot. Got them. They were great. But I had to go to my car and wait for them to bring me the food. It was excellent. 
Hey. But Uncle Nick's, when I pulled up, I was like, if Joe didn't tell me about this place, there is no chance in hell I would have stopped. It's literally Joe's Uncle Nick. Yeah, it might be. The food. It might be. <laughs> but it was really damn good. It was good. And then someone said, get cheese fries at Beefaroo on the way out. And I I forgot. So next time we go, I'll, I'll hit it up. I, I don't know what the what's the synopsis. Hopefully, hopefully sometime next week. I don't even. Has anyone been to Beefaroo? No. I don't even know what it is. I just like saying Beefaroo. Is it like a sit down, like a Baker's Square? No, or is yeah. it like a Portillo's? I there you go, Steven. Get on the Google machine. I have. Uh, I will admit, as many times as I've been to Rockford, I have never gone to the uh, to the Beefaroo in Rockford. All right, let's but see. We're I've, looking at the menu here. We were t- we were talking with uh, Rockford um, photographer extraordinaire Brad last night, and uh, he said that you know the, the Beefaroo locally uh, is is kind of like going to. A por- oh. It's it's like going to a Portillo's. It looks like uh, in the city. It looks like whereas Beefaroo's Arby's. elsewhere. Are not as good. Yeah, veggie club cheeseburgers. I mean, those look like it's stacked like meat sandwiches. Like I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not a, is basically opposed Rockford to that. Arby's. What's that Wild West burger. Left side looks Arby's. Right side looks like Burger King. That Wild West burger has got my attention. That sounds like a great combination. Get the two worst fast food chains and put them in one roof. Hey, Arby's used to be good. Then they got rid of ham. How do you get chick- rid of ham as Arby's? Because I got to do like all this weird, crazy stuff that no one wants from all the roast like beef salad with grapes in it. And then there's like, randomly a want... mahi mahi burger on here. I've never sure, heard yeah. Of that. For those I'm that that want, guessing that's not very fresh. For sure. For that. those that want a healthier option at Beefaroo, go with the See, mahi mahi. I always mahi. thought Beefaroo was like like you go and you get a bowl of like <laughs> beefaroni. Like I was, <laughs> I, was like I I had that same image in my head. Macaroni, ground beef, and tomato. I sauce. thought that's it was. What I thought it was just going to be cup of beef. It's like sh- <laughs> it's like Chef Boyardee. Yeah, that's that's what I expected. Like like cheesy beef with some some pasta sauce. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm, hey, gonna, hey, hey, I'm gonna slack you the picture, Stephen, of, uh, of Uncle Nick's, because I think I think the world needs to experience what I. You did. know, I've seen that on like uh, on episodes of Crime Junkie. Pictures just like that. It looked like it looked like a place where murder has taken place. Uh, well, yeah. and while you were waiting for your food to come out, someone stole your catalytic converter. I was. Those are not. I will cheap. say my head was on a swivel when I was in my car waiting for my food. It was. Uh, I mean, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, sometimes the best food comes with an adventure. What's I said? I said if you're not fearing for your life, is it even worth it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steven. it's it's like. <laughs> Stephen pulling up the picture is now concerned for me. It's okay. I'm far away. I'm far away from, yeah, uh, we're, from we're, Uncle Nick's. We're all safe now. I'm not <laughs> knock, I'm not knocking the place. It was excellent. Yeah. And look, you got a kitchen. You've got the hey, ingredients. If it wasn't for the recommendation, you never would have stopped in that place. A, because you probably would have driven right by it. And B, because, right. mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not I'm not ordering food from there unless I'm told it's worth it. It was Stephen it was just weird... named this photo uh, the file uh, murder scene. So. <laughs> Murder so sandwich. a little little uh, there it is preview uh, there. from the interior of my CX thirty. Uh, there is the uh, there, there's me waiting there for is. my corn dogs to come out. That's it. That is it. So you walk in there, you can see the counter. There's about as much space between the counter and the door as there in, is between the other side of the counter and the back door. Yeah, so, this was one hundred percent a gas station. I was, was going to say the same thing. Gas yeah, station uh, this for sure. this used to be a, a quick mart, and it became a guy's and it was kitchen. at some kind of like. It like triangulated like three streets that ran two diagonal and one parallel, and then across the street on another building, it said Uncle Nick's home of the best euros, and it said see you next euro. That's like your catchphrase. Mm. It was excellent. I loved hey. it, but it was a little it's, bit scary. Sounds looking. like prime prime real estate there. Yes, it was. Uh, it was a it was a little scary looking. All right. Well, while you guys were enjoying gas station sandwiches <laughs> and uh, former gas station cre- sandwiches, creepy <laughs> yeah. stalker vibes, uh, the NHL was actually playing playoff games yeah, too. They were yes, and they were fun. We were watching. We watched on a couple Fubo of them. Free yeah, ad. on Fubo. Yeah, they were. Uh, uh, where should we start? We got. Can a few we start to- with? Um, oh, we got. We well, there's start, a lot. We got to start with some hard news. Jay's Jay's other boy. Our, yeah, Tavo. Our, that, he's my special finish boy too. Yeah, Tavo, broken hand, man. The Hurricanes, no, no pun intended, can't catch a break on the on the injury mm-hmm. front. Yeah, Tavo is broken out for the remainder of the playoffs. Surgery. Uh, needs surgery on his hand. I so saw earlier good. they are only confirming he will be out for the rest of this series. Well, I mean he's a hockey player. Beyond that, we so don't he know. might get surgery on his hand or have it amputated, and he'll be back next week with a robotic hand or something. Especially when you yeah. play for Rob Brendamore, you better get back out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. he'll be out there if, if literally possible. He'll he'll be out there, but uh, not great for Carolina. Can I? Can we talk? I mean, look, Sorokin, Ranta both had really good years. They're both real bad in that game. 
There yeah. were some horrible. Did you see that weird one that like Anders Lee yeah. batted out of the air? I mean, that, that's tough to blame the goalie on that one. That's just such a fluky. Oh goal. my god! Yeah. There was just a, but the overtime winner where he slid post to post, and then like over slid, just completely opening up the other side. Yeah. Like God, there was some bad goaltending yeah. in that game, and that led to another trend that I'm already tired of. Three days into the playoffs, yeah. When your team loses. Can you stop bitching about the referees? Mm. Every team that has lost their fan base, the ref sucked, the ref sucks. The officiating wasn't great in that game, but maybe, hey, either Shroken, make one more save. Yeah. Like the refs, I, I, bad, great teams overcome bad calls. The Blackhawks, absolutely. The Blackhawks, when they're during their runs, they would over, they, hey, they got a bad call against them. Hey. You kill the penalty. That's Brent Seabrook. And Jonathan Tays. When yeah. Jalmerson's goal was waved off, Seabrook's like, good, let's get to overtime. I'll we're end almost, this quick. We are almost to the uh, anniversary of the one of the most famous playoff games ever, where Marion Hossa, mm-hmm. game five against Nashville. That's all you have to say. But they killed off nearly five, four, five, uh, four five minutes. Five minute, five minute. In overtime. They had yeah. to kill off over oh, yeah. four mm-hmm. minutes of that penalty in overtime. And then they won the game. Kill off a penalty. Make a save. Don't put yourself in situations where a call could go against you. Stop blaming the officials. The officiating hasn't been great in the first few day games of the playoffs, mm-hmm. but that's every t- playoff that's season. Every the refs try year. and set the tone early, and then they forget to call anything as the mm-hmm. series and the pl- playoffs go on. They just, hey, so deal with it. Yeah, six power plays to zero is kind of bad, but, hey, maybe Carolina didn't commit any penalties. How about that? Like just because one team, it wasn't six nothing. I I uh, yeah, it was the uh, Islanders had four. The Hurricanes had one. The Islanders got two double minors for high sticking. But if a guy's bleeding, it's a two minute. I mean, they attack on extra. I, I don't understand the thing, and the the one who got in trouble. What official got in trouble for that for admitting to it a few years ago? Was it Tim Peel about the whole makeup call stuff? Well, we've given three penalties yeah. to the other team. Now we have to give that. You don't. Mm-hmm. If the other team's not committing penalties, why are you you don't have to call them? Yes, the officiating hasn't been great. But you know what? Maybe start blaming your players for not doing their job instead of blaming the refs. The the officiating in the Stanley Cup playoffs is is bad every year because they because they have two different rule books. They have the regular season rule book and they have the playoff rule book. And the playoff rule book is a mess. And that's why calls in games four, five, six, seven, they are almost non-existent because they say, well, these games matter so much that we are just going to make sure that no one dies on the ice. But, yeah, the refs, but everything's going to be legal. The, the refs don't want to be the reason why a team no. loses a the game. They, they, in those clinching scenario games. They, they are more... They're, they're not officiating the rule book in a game. They're more officiating the flow of the game. Yeah. And, and that's to your point. Like If, if a team's had two or three po- uh, penalties against them in a row... You know what? Maybe we swallow the whistle on the next one, and we maybe we're quick with the other team on the on the on another borderline call. Just you, call that shouldn't penalties. that shouldn't be the way it right. is, but that's the way it is, and it's not going to change tomorrow. So yeah, I, I'm I'm I agree. We've had we've had a couple of great nights of, of playoff hockey already, and the biggest thing that everyone is talking about on 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 podcasts, on shows, on Twitter, it's all officiating, 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 officiating. And it is awful. It's I can't a, take it. It's a scapegoat. Play better. I can't take it. I'd rather, I'd rather just say, here's a disclaimer. Officiating is going to be shit in the playoffs. So let's just deal with, deal it, with it and and focus on the hockey that's being played. Yep. And it's Every, like, Everyone is going to, have a, going to be uh, the victim of a bad call this playoffs. Deal with it. Yep. It all evens out in the end. And I don't understand the unwritten rule that people think, well, power plays have to be even in every game. No. Everybody's got to get five. No. They don't. If one team is playing like shitheads, they should be penalized for it. If, 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 a, team Boston is, Bruins. if a team is playing better than you, and the only way that you can slow them down is to try and hack and slash and, and break the rules, and, you get, and you're caught for breaking the rules, you're caught for breaking the rules. Like, that's what it is. It. If a team is better than you, they're better than you. Yeah. Like, that's, you, you, gotta you can't do to anything. You're going to win, you're probably not good And you're going to get caught. Anyway. Like yeah, so yeah. it's before we wrap up, we got to make way for the CHGO Sports Show. Uh, we were talking before Mario got here about the wild goaltending situation. Stupid. Where Philip Gustafson is great in Game One, then they go to Mark Andre Fleury in Game Two. Two of those goals were deflected, granted, on Fleury, but boy, did he look lost 
What Mark are Andre you Fleury doing? Hasn't been good most of this season. And guess yeah. what? He kind of sucked last year for the Hawks. We were kind of he, like, well, you know, the team's bad, but we saw a lot of the floppiness and the out of the position stuff, and we blamed it on the team being bad. But you're seeing the same stuff with Minnesota, and that's not a bad team. Philip Gustafson yeah. gives them the best chance to win a Stanley Cup, and because Mark Andre smiles and is nice to everybody, we don't want to hurt his feelings, so we got to do this rotation. You're coaching yourself out of the playoffs again, just like you did last year with Cam Talbot and Mark Andre Fleury, you couldn't decide on one guy, and before you knew it, your season was over. Well, goalie goalie rotations are becoming more commonplace in the NHL. Not and in the playoffs. Well, it's now that that trend is reaching well, the playoffs, where where teams are teams are going to continue rotating goalies to make sure that guys are guys are as fresh. I agree. Go with the goalie that is going to give you the best chance to win, uh, either on a either on a nightly basis or on a, on a series basis. And, you know, if, if, if you go back to, you know, the, the Blackhawks in 2015, 2013, you know, if you would have said, like, you could, you could flip-flop Corey Crawford, Ray Emery, or Corey Crawford and Scott Darling, you'd say, well, no, like, you go with one guy. Right. That thinking is, is, is I think, has is, is changed in the NHL recently and there's a few exceptions there's guys like Andre Vasilevsky, Igor Shosturkin, Connor Hellebuck like <clears throat> those are the guys that you're going to say no you're going to play all 20 plus games that we play if we get to the cup like you're, you're playing every single minute but I think teams are now going to continue the the tandem that they bring from the reg regular season rotation into the playoffs and I, it can work but I think if you have a guy who Wins a playoff game. Wins a playoff game the road. and looks good. Yeah, right. You give him the next. You give game. him the next game. You play him until he loses, and then you put Flurry. Well, and Bill says they're trying to keep his playoff streak alive. Seventeen I don't years. Care about Great. That. Then keep your Stanley Cupless streak alive, Minnesota. Do you think Marcus Foligno gives a rat's ass about Mark Andre Flurry's playoff? Guess streak? what? Neither should Flurry. No. Why are we right. trying so hard to keep not hurt his feelings? Sure, he's a great guy, nice guy, great smile, nice big white teeth. I don't care. Sit on the bench. Yeah, like great. Congratulations. You make a crap ton of money. You had a great career. You're an instant Hall of Famer. What more do you but need? But you're the second like, best goalie yeah. on your team right now. Exactly. Hen Henrik Lundqvist had to eventually sit in New York. So it's it all. And it, it it's all not comes, like comes down. a legacy guy. That all 17 of those seasons were no, with Minnesota. It's, it's right. just he was you know. he was there. And like yeah, I don't I don't get it. And, and you know, you killed your momentum. Yeah, not saying that the stars weren't going to win that game anyway. They you they had a lot of momentum, and they came out firing. But man, that just I, and if I'm Philip Gustafson, I'm sitting on the bench going, I could have stopped that. I would have stopped that one. I would have stopped that one. Like I don't. So I don't it's, it's a good way to lose a team too. It's a good way to lose a job. Yep. All right, it's sunny out. What do we got to do, Greg? You got to buy some shady rays. All right, that's what you do. Next? No, kidding. Uh, <laughs> Shetty Rays, they have you covered for the warm weather ahead. It's gorgeous out today, that's for sure. They have premium shades at affordable prices. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that is better than any expensive pair you're ever going to wear. They have durable frames and extremely clear optics for your outdoor adventures or driving in traffic. That's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane, insane protection in all of eyewear. If you break or lose your glasses, you're going to get them replaced for free no questions asked even on day one so you can wear your shady rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase and together with their customers shady rays is providing much needed support to nonprofit partners across the united states through the shady rays impact program they do everything from building play sets for pediatric cancer patients to providing young adults with ms the outdoor adventure of a lifetime Shady Rays is making an impact in your community and others just like it now and for years to come. If you don't love your Shady Rays, you can exchange them for a brand new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop because Shady Rays has your back and they're giving you the best deal of the season right now. Go to ShadyRays.com, use the promo code CHGO at checkout and you'll get 50% off all orders of two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses and you can try for yourself the shades that have five-star ratings from over 250,000 customers. Do it. Hey, you know what else you need to do? What? Save money and energy with the ComEd Energy Efficiency Program. Okay, tell me more. Well, the ComEd Energy Efficiency Program is committed to helping families and businesses in the communities that they serve 
helping manage energy usage and lower energy bills now and into the future. Since you told me that, I just learned a lot about ComEd. You did. They offer a wide variety of incentives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial, industrial, and public sector customers of all sizes across their territory. Comet offers free facility assessments that can help find energy saving opportunities like for HVAC systems, commercial kitchen equipment, or industrial processes. Jay, it sounds like you read up a lot I did. on Comet. How does that exactly work? Well, an authorized engineer is going to work with you to develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and needs, and they can be done in person or virtually, and they last about two hours. Within three or four weeks, customers will get a detailed report showing energy efficiency products that they can start working on right away. Each recommendation will include estimated energy savings, cost savings, project cost, potential incentives, and simple payback. If you own a business, don't wait. Get started saving money and energy today. For energy saving tips, lighting incentives, or to schedule your free facility assessment, go to comed.com slash powering biz. Yes, that's what I said. Comed.com slash powering biz. Not sticking to the script. You gotta stray a little bit. Mm. Gotta keep it fresh. Yeah, gotta keep it fresh. Call yeah. me off guard. <laughs> yeah, schedule it today. Let's go. Schedule it Do today. Do it. Schedule it. All right. We're making way for the CHGO Sports Show. They're coming up next. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. We are back tomorrow at 2 p.m. with Blackhawks winger Mackenzie Entwistle. Should be mm -hmm. a great time. Tell a friend. We'll talk to you at 2 o'clock on Friday on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.